All right, and we're ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's group conversation. Uh, my name is Delia Havens. For those of you who've not met me before, I'm the Director of Engineering for the Ops Product Teams. Um, so today's conversation, I thought, just keep it simple. I picked one topic um, that's been uh, consuming a lot of my time and also I have a lot of interest in. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, but before we do so, um, I did want to quickly uh, send a welcome to two people who joined our team recently. Uh, Peter and Ruben joined the Monitor team. We're so excited to have you on board. Uh, we also have a developer joining the secure team in November. Uh, we're a bit a long way away from our actual hiring uh, targets. So if you have referrals, please send them our way. I will <laughs> shamelessly continue to ask for that uh, because we have great people and we would love more great people to join our team. Uh, so please don't hesitate to refer your friends um, and I'm happy to have conversations with anyone that you think uh, would be interested. All right, cool. So on to our um, topic of conversation for today. Um, if you joined in August, I introduced this um, you know, MR that we were putting together regarding throughput and throughput in general is just, it's, it's a metric. It's a, one of the simpler metrics that I've worked with before. And the reason I like it is for its simplicity. It's basically tracking the number of things that you can do from this particular start point to whatever you consider to be a deliverable. In our case, what I'm hoping to, to achieve is to basically get a sense of um, how, what is our kind of code effort that makes it into production? So there are a lot of things that we do in support of that code reviews, meetings, you know, design, all, all of the things that go into like, what are we actually going to develop? But at the end of it, simplifying that and, and hopefully tracking down to probably, you know, the MR that makes it into production, that's the unit that I'm targeting to basically count. Um, and I, I want to open this up, um, so that's, that's why I kept it to one slide. Please ask any questions, happy to clarify it, challenge me on it. Uh, that's kind of the best way to, to have uh, some of these conversations. And, and just, if you're not familiar with throughput, um, to contrast that with velocity, which um, some of you are familiar with, with velocity, you kind of focus on estimation, using story points or weight. Um, in a sense, you could think of it as, Velocity is, is a way to estimate the work. Throughput is an actual reflection of work that's been complete. Um, so throughput does need some time to build a trend because you're not estimating your throughput. You're basically reflecting actually how much you delivered or how many of these units actually made it into production. Um, a couple of links here um, just for reference and, and hopefully um, to get you more familiar with the topic. Um, the first link is from the iteration that I introduced in August. The next two links are conversations that we're having right now around iteration two. And iteration two, a big part of it is how can we apply this model across the whole engineering team? And I want to be really clear. I, I understand that this may seem like a big change, uh, but my hope is that with tracking that number, we start to give teams autonomy over how they want to execute, but have accountability because now we have data to, to basically show that we are on the right track or when we introduce change, it's actually having the success that we're hoping for. So that's all the material I got prepared. Now um, I'm going to stop sharing and open it up for questions. So let's see here if I can get back to my chat. <laughs> And, and feel free to jump in because I think it's, it's really great when, when someone asks the questions ver verbally. Um, so jump in and I'll, I'll try to grab questions from the chat as we go. Okay, I guess I'll, I'll take Gabriel's question. So how does throughput relate to cycle analytics? That's a great question. Um, the way I've used this before is that you combine throughput with cycle time and now you're able to determine not only how, how many units you've achieved per week or whatever time period you're trying to track, but now you can also categorize those and, and, and pair it up with cycle time and say, you know, when we go out to fix a bug, it our cycle time is two days. So we're able to turn around defect 
resolution in, in two days and get it into production. Whereas when we take on an issue, it takes a month to get through that and then have a conversation around, well, how can we improve that cycle time? Um, so yeah, no, this is really great because I don't think one metric should be used independently. Uh, metrics are just data and th the data is to facilitate these healthy conversations. Uh, so the more of these data points, the hopefully the healthier you can um, have on the perspective of what the problem is, what bottlenecks you may want to address and things like that. Th does that answer your question, Gabriel? Feel free to, you know, um, ask any follow-ups, I'm happy to clarify. Yeah, uh, kind of uh, a little bit. Uh, my, my, my initial uh, thinking process was uh, whatever you come up with uh, results of like this, this um, exper experiment, we should try to make it into a feature inside GitLab. It's, yes, uh, no, it's absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And this is what I love about this company is that we're, we're, develop, we, we're building the product for us. Um, so I, I, I'm happy to point you, I have an epic actually um, that I started in the Insight project to uh, define some of these metrics. And Victor is also tagged on it. So I'm hoping that having some of these rough implementation translate into building it in the product. Because I know I'm not the only like engineering leader or, or engineer who would make use of, of that data and have that information. So yeah, no, great question. Thank you. Um, Kelly, I'm not I'm familiar not with Lean Kit, um, but it sounds like that might be something I will look into. Yeah, so it it, um, it was a Kanban board. I don't know if it's still around or not, but um, I haven't used it for a number of years. But basically, you could you could go through the whole cycle time and efficiency, and you would have like the nice little bar graphs and right. Uh, I don't know if it's bar graphs, but uh, it would it would it would provide that. So I guess send you a link if it helps. Yeah, no, no, I, I appreciate. It. I just put it in Google. Uh, I'll take a look. I I haven't used it before. Um, some of the 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 ways I learned this was built in house because. We, we were basically pulling it off of JIRA. Um, I would love, like, the reason I'm, I'm excited to be at GitLab is because we can turn it around and fit it in our product. Um, but this is great. I will spend some time with it. Cool. Oh, and, and just so you know, I've asked, like, the DevOps, the, not the DevOps, but the Ops backend team to join managers, developers to facilitate with this conversation. We've spent the last quarter uh, working with the team on breaking things down to small MRs, getting feedback on is this healthy, how much overhead do we have. Um, we were tracking some things manually, but manual. I, I try to avoid having to do so manual uh, tallying, if you will. So we are working with Mech's team on building a dashboard. Um, so that moving forward, this is pretty automated, but please ask questions. I, like, I think they would have a great perspective as well. And, and you know, anyone, uh, from the ops team, feel free to jump in and, and grab a, a question if, if it speaks to you. Okay, I might have to play Sid's card and hold this call hostage till we get more questions. Uh, um, I have one question. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering about um, how you, you're going to use this data because I'm afraid of the the big differences between all merge requests. I mean, because this is a unit you, you will be counting. And depending on the work you're actually doing, you can end up with just one or two merge requests or dozens of them. I mean, if, for example, you're working on, a C, on an EE feature, you will have one image request on EE, uh, maybe a backport in CE then two other merge requests for documentations, but in the end, you just bring one value to the product. Right. So that I, I understand this is more uh, uh, an engineering metrics, but how would it make sense to have for an iteration, I don't know, uh, a big number and then a smaller number? Um, how, how would you leverage that? Do you mean crossing data with uh, labels of issues like bugs, etc., cetera, to know more? Where, where, where it, um, it belongs and make no, that, the that's subject. a great question and 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 we're gonna have to probably apply and learn but from from my experience with this is one of the things i like about throughput is that it, it incentivizes small MRs. So the idea is to try to standardize on delivering the smallest thing with quality to production so let's make sure that we're not just like 
putting MRs that you know are hidden behind feature flag, provide no value, all the all the things that you wouldn't expect in an MR. So so focusing on the smallest thing, and but like you said, things are not going to be equally the same. However, just one of the one of my ways of adopting metrics is to look at trends and not raw numbers. Uh, raw numbers are helpful if you need to dig in, and and that's applicable in in some cases. But overall, what we'll be looking for is a trend line. Is you know, not so much like, oh, this team can, can you know, deliver 20 units every week. Uh, I would be looking at the trend line and basically saying, your trend line is, is around this average. Um, maybe we hit a bottleneck or maybe there was a challenging situation and our throughput dipped down. So come back and have a healthy conversation around like, why did that happen? Uh, but specific to your question, I, I think like, we trying to get away from the raw number focus because that's not the goal. The goal is focus on delivering as smallest of a bit that you can. And over time, you will start to normalize these activities. But it, it does mean that you have to accept that some things are going to be a little bit bigger and some things may be a one line change. And that's OK. That, that, that's like we shouldn't try to optimize on, you know, breaking MRs down to two lines of code to get those things to match. Does I, uh, that if help? I can, if it if I can add to that, um, totally agree. Like, not, not every merge request is created equal and we have to live with that. Now, two specific examples were named, CE and EE having, needing two merge requests, that's bad, we shouldn't do that. So had the, the quality team, uh, Remy, they're working to combine it into a single repository so we can get rid of all that unnecessary brain damage. The second thing is a separate MR for the documentation. I think that's an anti-pattern. Uh, so I, I get like, oh, we we'll want to get stuff in before the deadline. How are you going to review code when you don't know what it does or what it's supposed to do, right? That's, that's the, in the documentation, we say, this is what it's going to do. And then we have the code and you make sure that the two conform. How can you do a code review without documentation? So I think it's really bad that we're saying, oh, I'll, I'll do the documentation later. No, <laughs> it is necessary to do the review in the first place. Um, so I've, I think documentation as an afterthought is an anti-pattern and we should get rid of it. And, and that way it will be one merge request. And still we have one liners and thousand line merge requests. Um, so the Dahlia's points are all valid, but the two specific examples, both anti-patterns and we should get rid of them in my opinion. Cool, thanks Sim. If I can add on, okay. on top of the add on too, um, I think one of the other things that I don't think we've talked about yet is the opportunity this is going to give us to have a really good system for talking about improving our velocity in a healthy way. Yes, you may have improving situations. Improving velocity or throughput? Well, improving throughput as, as a metric, right? Um, because what you can do is you can say, okay, maybe one team is getting 10 merge requests done and one team is doing 20. It, as long as we set these standards and avoid these anti-patterns, um, like Sid was just talking about, we can also go in and we can start saying, okay, let's set a KR, let's improve throughput by 20%. And assume that as long as we're not violating these anti-patterns, we're actually finding other ways to increase the amount of work, increase the number of times that we're shipping something in a helpful way. Yeah, exactly. Like, 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 like yeah. this is the one few things where if you if you start gaming the system, you actually make it better because you're going to do smaller <laughs> iterations. So yes, please try to game the system. <laughs> that exactly. is my favorite thing about throughput. Actually, said is that, like, the, it's our nature to say how can I how can I make you think that this number is great and game it? And I'm like, go for it, knock yourself out. Um, but I do want to highlight though, like, I understand that that smaller means it may seem like we're adding overhead. Understand that. I am very aware of overhead and we need to reduce it as much as possible. But the goal of small iterations has been really, really powerful. Um, you know, not only small changes, but reviewers are having an easier time. Maintainers are having an easier time. We're seeing things go into production much faster. Uh, so be aware of overhead. We should continue to improve and reduce it. Uh, but recognize that yes i i acknowledge that with smaller things means that we're creating more mrs and, but that is a much better um application if you will than having three weeks worth of work and spending a week just to review it having multiple days of addressing comments and so on um so i'm hoping that you know either 
you you see it in application once you start adopting it or feel free to tag one of the one of the ops developers and and they're probably going to give you some examples of things that they went through um okay tune i think you put a question did you want to vocalize it i i know you're on the call uh yeah basically i was wondering if the, if the throughput was something that was would uh, would have been taken in consideration when you're talking about promotions from going to one level to the other like senior star or whatever, whatever. um personally i'm i'm not a big fan of team metrics being used for individuals their the data is really important and i think there are some things that um could you know help a manager have a performance conversation if that is a concern however i would hesitate to target throughput because of the nature of it if if we say you need to you know to be a staff you need to push out you know 25 mrs per week there is an easy way to game it and it's not a very like that's not the goal the goal is to, you know as you move from senior to staff the 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 problem that you're trying to solve is more complex it it does require more time so so actually what i've seen happen is that as you move up some of the like your throughput may go down but you are introducing like you're supporting the team you're coaching you're facilitating um you know other people to be more successful so i would i would hesitate to use throughput in that way if i may i just have a concern if i can uh, step in <laughs> yes all right perfect thanks i i'm in the airport uh all right my, my only concern in this is that we will need to um make sure that the review queue is um improved accordingly because it's a lot easier for a reviewer to stick to incremental changes and in this case that means we no longer require people to have uh, random accesses to that queue i mean it's not super clear to me what is all this queue this review queue is organized and we often have the problem that reviewers are not available we don't know how to assign to this and with this model we will stick more reviewers to that does that make sense to you yeah, no, Philippe, that, that's a very good point, and 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 you're right. Like that's something that we've seen in practice, where we push an an MR and it sits for multiple days to get a review. We we're gonna have to solve that problem for throughput to be successful. Not not in as a metric in its own, but just the goal is to deliver to production smaller and faster things. Um, so we do need to work on how to get reviewers to review things quickly. Almost one of the things we've done. I've done in prior life is starting with an SLA. So saying like an MR should get a review within X number of hours or within a day or something to that. Um, there is something that that is definitely um, one of the things I'm working on in the background is increasing our maintainer pool. Um, our maintainers are extremely valuable. We They hold quality of the product, but right now we're growing the engineering team to a size that's not, you know, uh, within, a, you know, with a very tough ratio for maintainers. Um, a lot of the feedback I get is that the last week of prior to freeze is, is a nightmare for most reviewers and maintainers because of the pressure that comes with it. So one thing that will really help is that as we deliver things incrementally and more frequent throughout the release, that pressure should start to relieve from that last week. And, and then we really need to focus on like, improving and coaching reviewers so that the maintainer's role is is not having to dig in much deeper uh, but also like how can we grow the next set of maintainers so that we have a good ratio of maintainers to developers on the team it'll also help with our community contributions for sure um, so thank you for bringing up that point philippe it's another one of those ways that there's almost no bad way to gain the system Right. As long as we avoid the anti pattern of just not reviewing things, anything we do to try to make that happen more quickly uh, is going to help. Sorry, Tommy, can you? The, I, was, I missed that. The anti pattern of not reviewing things? Right. So I was saying that's another way where we're going to have pressure to game the system in order to keep the throughput up. Um, so as long as we avoid the clear anti-patterns, like we could say one way we're going to go faster is just not have people review things and merge them. Before I don't think done. that's the idea. I think, I think right. the idea is, is that the, the smaller you make your changes, the easier things are to review. And 
the smaller you make your changes, the less you'll have at the end of the release cycle. Exactly. And there, and there are perhaps some other ways that we could try to speed that up as well. But as long as we avoid the anti-patterns, the clear anti-patterns, just about anything we can do to make the reviews go faster uh, or have more opportunities for review is going to help us move faster with our throughput. Uh, I'm curious about like the, the your your roadmap here or your vision about this. Is throughput like the first step that then will evolve into something more like moving to velocity or something that takes uh, context or uh, the type of work or something that evolves into something kind of like the idea of psychoanalytics that takes the whole um, the whole life cycle of coming from idea to production, or is this, or is throughput the ultimate goal? Because I, I think this is like a first step that should be improved with uh, additional uh, dimensions or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm happy to have conversations around it. For for me, throughput is is the goal. Um, we, we were talking about, you know, adopting more CD practices and, and basically, you know, focusing on delivering faster and smaller bits and, and throughput helps, helps in the sense of you, you don't need the ceremonial estimation. You don't need to um, put your effort toward, you know, velocity and story points or weights and, and so on. And instead use that effort to break things down to as small a unit as possible that you can deliver. Um, so to me, throughput is, is the metric that, I, that I'm looking for. And, and I like it for its simplicity, how closely aligned it is with CD. Um, and, and to enhance it, one of the next iterations will do, even though like it was kind of easy to implement. So I don't know if we want to count it as its own iteration. But within throughput, we're also going to cat categorize um, the different MRs. So um, we're going to start labeling MRs based on you know, what areas of investment they line up with, whether they're feature security issues, um, potentially, you know, like impediments, like technical things that, that we're doing. But that, that along with, with the throughput number would give us an idea of how much we're investing on each front. Uh, we're all here to build great products. So we wanna make sure that we, we don't get into that notion of um, only focusing on one category versus the other. So having the throughput category is also going to help us continue with that balance. Um, and um, this is actually going to be very positive with PM being engaged in prioritization because they will have the full view of the team's bandwidth and having those categories really outlined is an easy way of having that conversation around what balance do we want to have or what balance we currently have. Thank you for the question. And, and, and like, please comment in the issues. These are, you know, we're adopting this model and, and we need it to be the GitLab model. Um, so if there are things in, that are obvious that we should improve, by all means, uh, we should have that conversation. Is that, uh, I love that quote you said, instead of spending time estimating, focus, spend time breaking things down. Is that front and center in the stuff in the handbook? Uh, I think it is in, in, in that last MR that, that I put, Sid, but I will, um, I will go back and check on it. But, so but the yeah. The last that, MR is 12816. Um, it's, sorry, the, yes, 12816, exactly, which, which pushed the, you know, the throughput definition into our handbook. Yeah, it says, it says under 132, instead of spending time sizing and figuring out the weight, we should put this effort towards breaking issues to the smallest deliverable. Cool. All right, any final questions? This has been really great. Yeah, I'm... I'm I'm a, no, no one will ever do a final question, Dahlia, so don't bother asking for it. <laughs> <Sorry>. um, <laughs> okay. it's, it's hard. We're figuring this out, these group conversations, but I think the whole initiative is amazing. And I think this is like, we have this value of iteration, 
but how we do it and how we measure it, uh, we're figuring that out. And uh, thanks for your help and that. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Sid. All right, everyone. <laughs> Philippe, Philippe says, yeah, last questions <laughs> before five, four. <laughs> Cut it off. All right. Um, no, this has been great. We are 25 minutes in, so I'll go ahead and end the call. Thank you so much. Please use the links, contribute to the conversation, uh, schedule coffee chat. Happy to talk to anyone interested in, in the in the topic, and we'll we'll keep we'll keep at it. Iteration is our value. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.